Honestly, I feel like I have flies buzzing in my brain. And that little empty seasonal depression feeling is gonna creep back into my soul. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Hello and welcome back to the Hard Feelings Podcast. This is of course my mental health podcast where we talk about things like anxiety and depression, aka hard feelings. We've got an erratic episode, if I'm being fully honest with you. I did not know what I was going to talk about this week because usually every week I talk about a mental health topic that is weighing heavily on my mind, but this week, I gotta tell you, I was telling my therapist yesterday, she was asking how I was feeling and I was like, honestly, I feel like I have flies buzzing in my brain. It's that type of a scrambly feeling I have going on right now. And so this morning I was on my mental health walk and I was listening to a new artist to me, not a new artist. I was listening to a Norma Tanega album. Really, really good, by the way. It's gonna, one of her songs is gonna be my mental health song of the week, spoiler. And it helped me to think through my emotions a little more. And I've decided that I am feeling melancholy this week. And I wanted to talk about it with you because I feel like melancholia is something that's kind of of inevitable when you're doing this inner healing work that we're doing. When you are prioritizing your mental health and trying to heal parts of you that have needed healed for years, there's some melancholia that happens there. My personal definition of melancholy is a happy sadness for letting go of past beliefs and behaviors. Now that is not the Oxford definition. The Oxford definition is a feeling of pensive sadness, typically with no obvious cause, which, you know, I feel like they kind of go together because I do feel like there's no obvious cause. I just kind of have this lingering sadness. It's a nostalgic sadness, melancholia is for me. And I think that's because of the time of year it is. You know, it's fall. I'm recording this Thursday, October 26th. It's right before Halloween times. Fall has always been a really happy time in my life growing up. I have so many beautiful childhood memories of fall. My mom always went full out for Halloween. She would volunteer in my class room as a room parent and throw the Halloween parties. She would always buy me cute costumes and support whatever ideas that I had. She made up the cutest little goodie bags for the trick-or-treaters. She didn't just give out candy, she gave out full goodie bags. Like, we are a Halloween family, so I think I'm getting a lot of, you know, little melancholy feelings because I feel sad that those memories are all in the past. You know, there's there's part of me that really just wishes I could go back in time and be that nine-year-old girl in my third grade classroom wearing my hippie costume that consists of a tie-dye t-shirt that my sister gave me and flare jeans that my mom ironed on little patches to and got up early to crimp my hair. Like, here's a visual of that for you. Come on, this is the cutest costume you've ever seen. Yeah, I don't know. Part of me just wishes I could go back to that and appreciate it more. I, I've got some nostalgic feelings, some melancholy feelings. Like I said, it's a longing for things that are past and you know will never be the same again. Even if I, you know, have kids and try to do all these same traditions for them growing up, it won't be the same because I'm I'm not my mom. I'm a lot like her, but I, we're not the same person, so I'll never be able to fully recreate all of the beautiful memories that she created for me. That's why I'm using the word melancholy and not sadness, because melancholy is, it's a happy sadness. When I was looking up the Oxford definition, they gave examples of longing for a place you used to live, longing for a school you used to go to, like longing for memories that had a lasting impact on you. And for me, so many of my positive childhood memories are from the fall. I see the leaves changing outside and I'm, I'm from Massachusetts. I'm from New England. We have some of the most beautiful foliage in the world. New York has beautiful foliage too, but come on, New England is like the, the planet of the beautiful foliage. It's so, so nice. Seeing all the leaves changing makes me think of home and also seeing all the leaves changing and falling also makes me think about the impending winter. The leaves are starting to fall. I know we only got a few more weeks left here before the trees are gonna be barren again and that little empty seasonal depression feeling is gonna creep back into my soul maybe maybe I don't know but yeah so there's a few things going on here with this melancholy feeling longing for childhood memories also feeling like winter is coming and I I'm afraid I'm gonna get sad again so I feel like my body's preparing me for that sadness and starting to trickle in a little bit now I say I'm obsessed with healing my inner child I feel like that's something I've mentioned many many times on this podcast and in my everyday life, I'm always doing things to heal my inner child, but I think it's more of a melancholia for childhood, you know? Because like I said, I have so many good 
childhood memories and I feel like sometimes when you hear the term healing your inner child you think of you know going back and making positive memories doing things you weren't allowed to do as a kid and that can be an aspect of it too but for me I think it's more just like trying to recreate some of those memories because they were so happy replace this feeling of melancholia with just happiness and I don't know if you can do that right because I'm never gonna be able to fully recreate those childhood memories I'm not nine years old anymore I can't I can't go to at an elementary school Halloween party. Certainly not. If I don't know anyone in the class, they're definitely not letting me in. And I think all we can do to like deal with the melancholia of thinking of past memories like this is to talk about them. You know, in therapy, yesterday I was telling my therapist how I've been feeling weird and nostalgic. She was the one who gave me the word melancholy to put to it. And as soon as she said it, I was like, hell yeah, I'm melancholy. I'm melancholy as hell, for sure. You nailed it. Um, <laughs> but as I was talking to her and telling her all of these wonderful stories about my childhood and around fall time, because she asked me, she was like, oh, like what memories do you have of fall as a kid? And I think I talked like nonstop for 20 minutes because I have so many wonderful fall memories as a kid. We to go to the Harvest Festival every year in town. Like, my town went full Stars Hollow for fall times. It was so pretty and so nice. And it makes me feel good to talk about it, you know? It, it does have a little inkling of that melancholy, a little inkling of the sadness, because I know it'll never be exactly the same. You know, even if I were to move home back to my hometown, it wouldn't be the same, because like I said, I'm not a little kid anymore. And, you know, things are different. And that's, that's where the sadness creeps in a little bit. You can never recreate a moment in its entirety again. That's true with anything, right? Not even just a childhood memory. Any, every single moment that is happening, this moment right now, right here, I will never be able to completely repeat again because everything I'm doing, the cadence in which I'm speaking, the way in which I'm moving my hands, I'm not even trying to think about it. It's just not recreatable. And something about that makes me sad because when you're in the happy moments, you don't always feel grateful for them in the moment. You know, you're just living in the moment and that's good, but I just wish I could be more mindful of when these happy memories are happening to just like really sit and marinate it and just like, tattoo it onto my brain so I can remember it forever because yeah I'm, a, I'm in my melancholy era right now I'm in my nostalgic era right now and it's it's happy and sad you know play uh, Alexa play happy and sad by Casey Musgraves uh, Alexa cancel that that is not gonna be my mental health song of the week but that is another good mental health song for you to listen to. Casey Musgraves is someone who is awesome at describing the feeling of being happy but always feeling like maybe something bad is gonna happen around the corner. So having that happy and sad feeling at the same time. Ugh, melancholy is an interesting feeling. Like I said, sometimes just feels like flies buzzing around in my head because you feel this like weight of sadness and you're trying to find where the sadness comes from, but there's, there's really nothing there. Like I said, these are all happy childhood memories. It's not like I'm remembering something horrible that happened in my childhood around this time because I don't have a memory of anything horrible in my childhood happening around this time. Fall's always been awesome for me. Autumn is a fantastic season in my life, historically. So why do I have this sad feeling? Why do I feel that? I never claim to have all the answers on this podcast, as you well know, if you are not a first-time listener. So I don't really know if I have a resolution for this podcast. Like I said, it feels good to talk about the memories. So if you are also feeling really nostalgic right now, find somebody who you trust to talk about them with, you know? I don't, what's a way you can bring it up organically? That's always where my head goes to as an anxious girly, as a socially anxious girly. I'm like, how can I bring up the thing I want to talk about? I don't know. Just ask the other person the question. Say like, hey, what was Halloween like for you growing up? Do you have any happy memories of Halloween? What was fall? Do you like fall? Like, do you like fall? That's a great conversation starter because if the person says no, then you could just turn around and never talk to them again. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. People are allowed to have different favorite seasons that aren't fall. But yeah, talk about the happy memories. Look at old pictures. I have a picture on my bedside table. I didn't even realize. Like I said, I was talking to my therapist yesterday about all of my happy nostalgic memories. And as I was describing, the third grade Halloween party to her where I dressed up like a hippie and my mom came in to help, I realized that I have a picture uh, from that exact Halloween party next to my bedside table, next to a picture of my dad holding me dressed up like a pumpkin as a baby because I was born in September, so I was still a little teeny tiny baby on my first Halloween. So yeah, clearly the fall times have made an impact on me. I feel like if you, if you cut me open and looked at all my organs, they'd be shaped like maple leaves because 
I am fall. It's given me this melancholy feeling, but I gotta tell you, the only thing that's really been helping with it is going outside <laughs> because it's so beautiful out right now. And that's what I'm trying to remind myself is, you know, I can look back on all of these childhood memories and say, oh, you didn't appreciate them enough in the moment. You didn't realize how special these memories were in the moment. Oh, I'm so mad at myself for not doing that. But one, she was a kid. Okay, cut her some slack. You're 29. You obviously have much more perspective about this now than your nine-year-old self did. But also, having this perspective that I have now as an adult, I can try to appreciate those moments more going forward. You know, that's a strategy I've been imploring lately when I find myself going into an anxiety spiral, is to just stay still and take stock of everything around me and remind myself that the moment I'm in right now can never be exactly recreated again because every moment in life is different. And that's that can be sad, you know, it can give you that melancholy feeling, but it's also really exciting, right? Because when you're going through a bad moment, you know, you can also remind yourself, this moment is not forever. This moment only exists right now and will not exist tomorrow. So that can be comforting. You know, it can be saddening, but it can be comforting. And I think all we can do going forward is to try to make new traditions, try to recreate old traditions, you know, just because I can't go trick or treating anymore doesn't mean I can't still give candy out to the trick-or-treaters and live vicariously through them and watch spooky movies on Halloween times and make Halloweenies and buy Halloween candy and there's still all of these lovely things I can do for myself as an adult to heal my inner child. Like I said, I feel like the phrasing of healing your inner child implies that you had a bad childhood, which I think for some people, maybe that is the point of it. But for me, it's more like a... <laughs> healing the inner child that still lives within me, who for a long time I just kind of ignored because I thought, well, I'm an adult now. You're an adult, you have to be an adult now. You have to grow up. You can't do things like this anymore. Speaking of my mom, she's calling me right now. But yeah, I realize that's kind of a tangent. I have a whole episode on healing your inner child if you want to check it out. Just keep reliving those memories, being grateful for them you know, and being and being more present in the moments going forward. Like I said, when you're a kid, you don't have the forethought to know that you need to really cherish these memories forever because you, you just, you don't know. The memories almost feel more special when you're a little separated from them. And that's what brings that melancholy feeling is just knowing that you can't ever be in that moment again. But you can't have that feeling if you didn't have good memories to start with. So I guess we can just be grateful for that. All right, that's enough rambling about this week's topic. Let me tell you about the Norma Tanega song that I wanted to share. I love her. So I discovered this album that I'm picking a song from is from 1966. It is not a new album, but I discovered Norma Tanega from the show What We Do in the Shadows. Do you guys watch that? The theme song is You're Dead by Norma Tanega, and I love the theme song. So the other day I was listening to that, and then I listened to the rest of the album that that song is off of and it's nothing but bangers. It's so freaking good. It's amazing. I was listening to it on my walk this morning. It's 30 minutes long. I love a 30 minute album. I love listening to an album in order that's super cohesive. And I want to talk about A Street That Rhymes. That's the name of the song. It is a song about breaking free of what's expected, breaking free from the mold, breaking free of expectations of what other people expect from you. And one of the lyrics from the song is everyone is digging in a parallel line people live and die in 4-4 time. All I want to do is take my time. And to me, that really is just about breaking free of expectations. You know, we talked about last week when I talked about guilt, how I have a lot of guilt for not having a career similar to my parents' generation, not having a typical nine to five, not having what is a typical career for somebody my age too. Like I just feel a lot of guilt over that. And so I really like that this song is all about just doing your own thing, taking your time. There's another line where she says, syncopate your life and move against the grain. Don't let them tell you that they're all the same. And there's another line, the first line, I should open with this one. This is the first line in the song. She says, fly a red balloon on someone else this time, they will try to pull you down and change your mind. Break loose and find a new skyline. Beautiful. I just really like the whole messaging of this song. To me, I interpret it as if other people tell you that what you're doing is wrong because it's not what's expected, just go do it somewhere else. Just don't be around those people anymore because 
you're not like them, you know? And you don't have to be, and that's okay. You can take your time, you can find a new skyline, go fly your red balloon somewhere else. Ugh. I'm not doing this song any justice at all. You really just need to go listen to it. I always link it in the show notes and in the description and everything. It's a really beautiful song. It's a really beautiful album. It's, it's very cohesive, very folksy, great for this time of year, great for walks around the foliage. Um, yeah, highly recommend it. All right, you guys, I think that's gonna be it from me today. My mental health hack of the week is to go for a walk outside, go look at the foliage. If you don't have foliage where you live, there are some wonderful cozy scapes on YouTube. <laughs> I love putting those on. Oh my gosh, I watch those in the summertime where they just have like nice, soft, lo-fi music. You can mute it and put your own music if you want, but then they just have like beautiful fall scenes. You can see like city fall scenes, mountain fall scenes, anywhere fall scenes, beautiful foliage. And that always makes me feel good. Sometimes just having it in the background, Ugh, so good for my brain. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Tell me how you deal with melancholia, melancholy, feeling melancholy, the concept of melancholia. I wanna know how you deal. Anyway, let me let me wrap this up. I'm starting to get rambly. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode of the Hard Feelings Podcast. Be sure to follow, rate, review, do all the things. The things are in the description box in case I forgot to say any of the things. If you're watching this on YouTube and you see my makeup and you're like, well, that's unusual. That's quite curious. Um, I have all the products listed down below for you and I'll probably have an Instagram reel tutorial for this on my Instagram soon. So go follow me over there if you like bold makeup content. And thanks so much for listening and I'll see you next Friday with a new episode. Bye, take care of yourself.